Hi everybody, it's Janet and welcome to my channel. Well, I'm back with another foil quill video. I had promised to do a few different ones and uh, this is a follow-up to the first one which was an unboxing and review and test of the foil quill system. So if you're interested in seeing that and haven't yet, go to the right hand corner of your screen. I'll put the link there and I'll also put it uh, at the end of my video so that you can go watch that if you'd like. This video is about testing the various materials that I could find and see if the foil quill would work on them. Uh, before I do go in there though, I want to bring up something I learned from a viewer uh, through the comments of my first video and that is that those machines that only have one holder that serves as both the pen and the knife holder such as the Explorer 1, it will not uh, accommodate the foil quill. So you, if, if you have one of those machines beware because they don't have a fix for it yet and so that means that those of us that have the Explore 1 can't use the foil quill and that was on no materials or anything uh, that came with the machine but it did come to me as information from a viewer so again just beware of that all right so I tested a whole bunch of materials and uh, I was fairly surprised at the results and so I'll start going through them from kind of the most likely to succeed down to the least likely to su succeed, at least in how I thought of them. So I'm going to start first with just some textured paper. Here it is. Hopefully you can see that there is a texture in this paper. Uh, it's kind of typical for textured paper, at least the kind that I would work with. I can see it plainly in real life. I just don't know if you can make it out, but it does have the the crisscross grain in it and this is the design I picked to foil and you can see it did a great job the only thing is it got cut off here but that's because that's where my washi tape was but in areas where there was no washi tape did a fantastic job so there's the answer on that kind of expected that to work next thing I tried was vellum here's a piece of vellum and I want to hold this so you can see it hopefully it says see you at the beach and it's a palm tree. I thought I could use this in a book that I made for my upcoming vacation. It was perfect. There's nothing wrong at all. So clearly vellum works just fine. I should also tell you that I use the foil quill um, foil. It's this foil that I purchased in gold and I use the medium nib not the fine or the wide but the medium nib all right okay so after vellum I thought well let's try vinyl someone had requested that I try vinyl and I was a little concerned it might melt or overheat but it did nothing like that there was no smell there was no problem it didn't cover everything I have a little bit of a gap up here in the corner I'm not really sure why that happened, but honestly, you'd have to look at it pretty close to realize there was a mistake in there, so I'm still counting this as a success. And I made this because I thought it would be fun to put on my son's mirror in his bathroom to give him some positive reinforcement to floss his teeth. Those of you who've had 13-year-olds know what I mean. They need a lot of positive reinforcement. <laughs> anyway, I thought it was a cute, a cute little... Uh, graphic that I could use for that. So thumbs up on that too. Next I thought well, well let's try some material. So I went into my material stash. I found this. It's a cotton material that I had used for valances years ago. It's just a plain and thin cotton and as you can see it worked perfectly. Amazing. I really didn't know what to think about material and I applied this like I would apply paper, just straight onto the regular mat. It's not the light tack or the fabric mat, it's just your uh, standard mat. And uh, applied the foil over the top just like I would if I were paper. That's, I didn't do anything special. And look how beautiful it turned out. Pretty impressive. So I thought, well, if material works, maybe ribbon would. So I tried that. Look at that, guys. Oops, how about I turn it right side up? <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. This is uh, the phrase hello that I connected. I didn't have a long enough piece of continuous foil. I was using scraps. So I put a third scrap, or second scrap on top of this, and it didn't quite work. Um, but 
that is not the fault of the foil quill. It was just how I tried to cheat on saving some foil. But you can see the first two, which had the continuous sheet, worked perfectly. Wouldn't it be fun to do a ribbon that said your name or your child's name or um, you could customize it with a phrase that you use in your family or something like that for either cards or scrapbooks. I just think that is so cool. So satin ribbon is also a thumbs up and it works. Well next I thought how about mater other materials like canvas. Now this is Silhouette America canvas and it's made for print then cut through their machines. Uh, so it has an adhesive backing to uh, help it be stiff and um, I tried that. Did it the same way as I did with the materials. Worked perfectly again. Cannot complain about that. Perfect. Okay, next I thought, well, how about something a little thicker, maybe something with even more texture. So I pulled out this pack of faux leather. This comes from Cricut, and you'll see it's faux leather wood and wood grain. I use this brown faux leather. We still have very nice foiling being done here. Now you'll notice that the lines are thicker than they were with other materials. So let's take a look at the comparison of material versus the faux leather. You see this line is much thicker even though it's the same nib. And I think, and this is just my theory, that when the nib pushes into something soft and that has a little bit of give to it, it not only foils where the point is, but maybe a little bit around the edges of the point too because the material is touching it collapsing into the material that it's foiling. I don't know if that's what it's doing or why that I, why that causes the thicker lines for sure, but it makes sense to me. So I'm going to throw that out there as a possible reason for it, but it's beautiful. I would love this as a embellishment on a card or a scrapbook page. So once again, it's a go. Now to my first kind of failure. I thought, okay, well that worked. How about felt? That would be a stretch, right? So I tried black felt, and this is the result. It's not a complete failure. You can see that gold foiling, and it actually looks a little more bold on the camera than it does in person, but you can definitely see that pattern. But it isn't as clean and crisp for sure. You get very wide lines with this, and this is also why I thought maybe the thicker the material, the wider the lines end up looking. So there is felt, sort of a, mm, kind of a failure, I guess. Then I thought, well, how about fun foam? Wouldn't you know fun foam work too? This one really blew me away. I did not expect fun foam to work. This is the thin fun foam you get at most craft stores. And uh, it's cut off because I didn't have very much of this foam, so I, I ended up not, I, I should have made my pattern smaller, but I didn't. So anyway, you can see also though that this is very thick lines. And again, I think it is because of the thickness and the fact it squishes into the material and more than just the tip foils. But I like the look. I like that a lot actually. And it gets a much bolder line in something like this than it does using the bold nib on say paper. So success there. Very nice. Then I'm going to show you acetate. Now I should have fit this in earlier because I did think acetate would probably work or had a chance of working. So this is acetate that I recycled from packaging from other materials or other or things I've ordered. That's usually always what I use for acetate. I just cut it up and put it in a little box. But look how beautifully that foil, guys. Wouldn't this be wonderful on a shaker card? With, and you can imagine a pattern, words, whatever it is that you would like. Instead of embossing that, you can choose from the many thousands of designs that you can have through Cricut and use that for the pattern on your window for a shaker. I just wanted to show you something. On this side it's gold because it is a gold foil. When I flipped it over, it's silver. So perhaps that's another nice feature about 
Uh, the foil quill is when you use it on acetate you could choose between silver or gold. Or let's say it's blue, it's probably blue metallic and silver. So anyway, just something to note, something to be aware of. So also huge success with acetate. Alright, the very last thing I tested was a pretty much dismal failure. <laughs> this was on uh, the burlap paper. This is the stack it came from. I think a lot of us who like that country look probably have this in our stash or, or were very tempted to buy it. And some places I think you can still get it. Anyway, I tried a simple palm tree design on this and it's actually there but because the gold is so similar to the color of the burlap it really was a bad test so I decided to go to a different color here's the version of it in a lavender foil and again you can see the you could see the actual thing the shape of that palm tree but it's not very bold it's not what I would use uh, I don't think this is successful at all it's interesting to see that it does lay down the foil pretty well even though this is extremely bumpy material but it just isn't bold enough uh, to really show up well in the burlap so this is the one thing that I said was a complete and total failure but the rest hey it all had its own versions of working with this one being the worst and the felt being second worst but still not a complete failure um, depending on your need, it might be okay. So let's count how many things we had because I've kind of forgotten. So we had one material. We've got the vellum, that's two. We have foam, three. Felt is four. The faux leather is five. Canvas is six. Plain cotton material is seven. The ribbon was eight. Vinyl was nine. Vellum was ten. And the paper was eleven. So 11 different items and only one was a complete failure. Well, I hope this was helpful, helpful to you and helps you make a decision if you haven't bought the foil quill yet and you're trying to figure out whether you want to or not. Uh, and it may help you get the courage too to try some different materials. If you've tried anything different from these, please let us know in the comment section. Everybody can learn from that, including myself, and I really appreciate when I can learn from my viewers. I will be back again uh, with a test of different foils because I said, as I said in the first video, I was a little concerned that if there ever is a court case associated with this product, that they could eliminate the production of the foil that is made specially for the foil quill. So I'm, tr I'm on the hunt to find another heat activated foil that would work as well as we are memory keepers just in case. But I've had a hard time getting some of these foils in. I had some back quarters and different things happening. So I don't know when I'm going to be able to show that. I hope next week or maybe by the weekend. Kind of depends on what comes in this week. I did get one of them that I've been waiting for a while in today. And today is Monday. So I'm waiting for one more, I think. Anyhow, I'll be back with some other tips and tricks as well. I do also want to show you how it works in the Brother and take a look at the idea of scanning a stamp, for example, and then foiling that design, which I think could be a really great use of the stamps we all have if you've got a Brother Scan and Cut. All right, well, that does it for me. Bye. Well, once again, thank you for joining me here today. I really appreciate you visiting, and I've put up here uh, the link to subscribe to my channel and also to a couple more videos that I think you might be interested in seeing if you like this one. So I hope to see you back soon, but until then, keep crafting. Bye!